Hey, it's Cairo. Welcome back to the channel. Some March of the Machine spoilers just came out today, and I'm going to be looking over them, taking a first look, and some reactions to ones that I haven't really seen yet. I've seen a few of these, but let's look at them together and react and see if they're going to be good. Thanks for hitting the thumbs up. Thanks for subscribing. Let's get into it. First up, we have Glissa, Herald of Predation. One green, one black, three generic for three, five Phyrexian zombie elf legendary creature. Beginning of combat on your turn, choose one. Incubate two twice. So this is a new mechanic for March of the Machine. To incubate two, create an incubator token with two plus one plus one counters on it. And two generic mana, transform it. It transforms into a zero, zero Phyrexian artifact creature. So this is going to be an artifact token that you can pay two to transform into a creature with basically power and toughness equal to the plus one plus one counters on it it also i guess remains an artifact the phyrexian artifact or the creature types and you can do this at instant speed because nowhere does it say you can only do it at sorcery speed uh transform all incubator tokens you control as a second choice and phyrexians you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn so you play this it has to survive a turn so you go no no, no. you play this then you go to combat so it actually does, as long as you make it to combat, do it uh, immediately. And then you get to make those two tokens to save them for later or transform them. So that's actually pretty good. Um, it generates creatures in the form of incubation tokens, transforms them all, and then also gets them through with first strike and death touch. I think Lissa is actually pretty good. So the next card we have is Invasion of Ikoria. This is a new card, the battle card type that was first premiered on Atraxa Grand Unifier from Phyrexia All Will Be One. This is double green and X. When it comes in, you choose an opponent to protect it, and you and others can attack it. And when it's defeated, exile it, cast it transformed. Now, they did say that when you cast this transformed on the stream today, you do not have to pay any mana costs. So it costs nothing to cast it transformed. When Invasion of Akoria enters the battlefield, search your library and or graveyard for a non-human creature card with mana value X or less, put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle. So you're getting basically whatever non-human creature Creature from your graveyard or library at whatever it costs plus two green mana and then whenever you deal combat damage or a burn spell that deals damage to any target and do six damage to it you can cast Zalortha Apex of Ikoria legendary dinosaur with reach who's an 8-8 eight eight for each non-human creature you control you may have that creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked yeah pretty powerful so a huge payoff for getting uh that siege of ikoria uh down to zero we'll see if how this sees play i'm not quite sure yet so next up we have the last of the mirin sword cycle this is the last one this is three mana sword of once and future equipped creature gets plus two plus two has protection from blue and from black which is really useful especially in standard right now whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player surveil two meaning you look at the top two cards of your library Choose to put them top on uh, back on top of your library in any order or into the graveyard. Then you may cast an instant or sorcery with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell will be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. This sword, whenever it makes contact and blue and black have creatures that can't be blocked, this is going to let you play all your little removal and your bounce spells and your little card draw spells and everything for free. This could really rack up some value and I think this is going to see play in standard and possibly other formats. I think this card's very good. Okay, so next up we have an uncommon burn spell, Stoke the Flames. Double red, two generic for a cost of four, but you can convoke it. So this is a returning mechanic. It says your creatures can help you cast the spell for each creature you tap while casting the spell. It pays for one generic or one one mana of that creature's color and it deals four damage to any target certainly going to be good in limited i would assume could see some play in um, some constructed decks especially if you have a couple creatures to make this cheap two mana or one mana even for four damage to any target is actually very good at instant speed next up is traumatic revelation at common one black one generic you see chandra here facing off against the phyrexianized nissa it's a sorcery target opponent reveals their hand if you you can choose a creature or battle card from it and if you do that player discards that card if you don't and you miss with it you get to incubate three meaning make one of those uh incubator tokens the artifacts that you pay to to transform it in this case it'll be a three three creature uh, it's a common card, so yeah, we'll see if it sees play. I mean, it's kind of cool that you, if you miss with it, it costs two mana, and then you get to at least have Incubate, but certain decks will want it, certain decks won't. I assume if you're in mid-range or control, this will be more useful, especially if your opponent has something to disrupt that you know of. Other than that, I'm not sure. 
Next up is Archpriest of Shadows. This is a 5-mana 4-4 human warlock, and this card is actually very tricky. And let me explain. It has backup 1, which the tooltip reminds us when this creature enters the battlefield, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following abilities till end of turn. So this can go on Archpriest of Shadows itself, or it can go on another creature. And it gains Death Touch, but it also gains the other thing. So if you're thinking it only gains Death Touch, it's actually gaining whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is actually pretty nasty because it allows it to have an effect when it comes down immediately on turn 5. If you have another creature, you give something else Death Touch, you make its power and toughness go up by 1 and you attack. And then they're forced to either block it, hopefully they have a chump blocker. If they don't, they lose one of their creatures. And if they don't block it, they take that damage and you get something back from your graveyard to the battlefield immediately. And it stays. It's not like if you control Archpriest of Shadows or it dies, then that other thing goes away. It just stays. So it can generate some value. And I really like that you have the flexibility of putting it on Archpriest of Shadows so it's a 5-5 if you think it's not going to get removed. Or putting it on something even small, like a 1122 token, sending it in, and they have to make that decision. So Archpriest, I think, is pretty good. Not insane, but like, there's some value here. Next up, we have, I guess, the white version of the backup 5 mana cost rare. This is uh, 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four flying, first strike, and lifelink. When it comes in, you can do a plus one, plus one counter on another creature and give that flying first strike and lifelink, and it's probably going to get through and damage your opponent, gain you some life versus another aggro race, and uh, yeah, it's still a 5-5 five, five flying first strike lifelink. I'm sorry, 4-4 four, four for 5 flying first strike lifelink. So, uh, lots of value on this card too. I'd be surprised if this didn't see play. It's very good. Next, we have Borb Rigmos and Fibblethip. Nice. It's teamer mana, two generic for Cyclops, Humunculus, legendary creature, 6 5. When they enter the battlefield or attack, draw a card, then you may discard any number of land cards. When you discard one or more cards this way, they deal twice that much damage to target creature. There's also a ability here for one generic, one blue. Put them uh, into the owner's library, third from the top. So you can use that at any time, not just at sorcery speed. Uh, you can use it in response to removal, but the the meat of this is the top line. So whenever it enters you draw a card, then you can discard some land cards. Nothing says that you have to discard land cards. If you have extra lands in your hand, you want to get them out, you can deal some damage to target creature to get a blocker out of the way, or you can just simply keep drawing cards every time you declare them as an attacker. I think this card's very good. The flavor is 10 out of 10. Everything is good about this. Next up, we have Itali Primal Conqueror. Two red, five generic for a total cost of seven for a 7-7 seven, seven legendary elder dinosaur with trample. When it enters the battlefield, each player exiles card from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among the non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. So obviously, the more expensive and good cards that your opponent has, the better, so you can get some really massive hits off of this. Maybe a six or seven cost uh, non-land card and cast it for free but you can also do one of your own spells and then this is going to be kind of crazy in commander when you have three opponents uh, it also has nine in a phyrexian mana and transform it and it becomes an 11 11 activate only as a sorcery i do not know what the flip side is so i can't evaluate it this time but this card looks like fun uh no matter what at the bottom line just exiling and hitting on this is going to be a lot of fun i don't know if it's going to be competitive or not Next is another battle card, and you're going to want to see the payoff for this one, because it does not disappoint. It's Azorius Man and X. When it comes in, choose a player to defend it. We already know that. When Invasion of New Phyrexia enters the battlefield, create X-2-2 white and blue knight creature tokens with vigilance. Thank God they're not soldiers for standard players, if you know what I'm saying. Let's check out the flip side. This has six health points, or whatever you want to call them. It transforms into a Planeswalker, Teferi Akosa of Zalfir. It's a four loyalty Planeswalker, plus one, draw two cards, and discard two unless you discard a creature card, which is odd for a Teferi Planeswalker. It's kind of rewarding you to have more creatures in your deck. Minus two, you get an emblem with knights you control, get plus one, plus zero, and have ward one. So that's a permanent effect, 
And uh, I guess every time you do the minus two, it just stacks like that. And if you've had knights made by the front battle card side, it's going to be super good. And minus three, tap X creatures you control when you do shuffle target non-land permanent and opponent controls with mana value X or less into its owner's library. So it kind of removes something temporarily until they draw it again. I like Teferi a lot, and I like the fact that he's super angry and he's out for justice invading new phyrexia next is merciless repurposing this was the first card i saw with incubate three it's six mana instant exile target creature and incubate three so it's cool that this is a two for one it is extremely expensive but you do get to exile one of their creatures and then incubate three pay two mana and then get yourself a three three creature for sure going to see play in limited i think it's too expensive even with that two for one but the flavor is cool and sad actually because erobrask is my favorite phyrexian praetor and he's just being kind of like you know taken apart and repurposed and that's not that's not cool next is transcendent message this is a message between teferi and ren it's four blue and x simply draw x cards but it also has convoke so if you tap blue creatures they can pay for some of the blue mana if you tap other creatures like say tokens that are artifact creatures they can pay for some of the x i think this is going to be tremendous in the right deck you're going to need some tokens you're going to need some blue creatures but you're going to be able to draw a bunch of cards and i can already sense a synergy between the invasion of new phyrexia and this make a bunch of knights tap them draw a bunch of cards seems pretty good to me I'm including this one because it says huge implications on the story. If you remember, a Johnny was completed and Phyrexianized, and there's a new art for it. Negate, counter target non creature spell, but the flavor text is interesting here. Teferi gave them time, Karn gave them a chance, but it was Malira, and you know, Malira, the living cure from Phyrexia, all will be one who paid the ultimate price to free a Johnny from Phyrexia's grasp so maybe she sacrifices herself to free a johnny and we get him back we've got pelucranos three green mana this is a transform card i don't know what it comes into but it's a hydra and it's a four five with reach for three mana and six and phyrexian white transform it and activate that only as a sorcery flavor is freed from the underworld the world eater resumed his endless feast with reckless enthusiasm so pelucranos a few sets back was black and Black and green, I can't remember. I think it was Theros. Is he from Theros? Let me know in the comments, everybody. But he is green. He's reborn as a 4-5-3 drop. Pretty nice. Next up, we have the new Quintorius. He was originally from Strixhaven. Now he's fighting against the machines. It's a 5-drop in Boros Colors. Elephant Cleric, 3-5 with Vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, exile target non-creature, non-land card from your graveyard and create a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token. Then you can pay Boros mana plus one for a total cost of three and sack a spirit. Choose target card exiled with Quintor Quintorius and you may cast that card this turn without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into a graveyard, put it on the bottom of its owner's library instead. So he takes cards from your graveyard at the end step, make spirits. When those spirits are no longer viable, you can sacrifice the spirit, pay three mana and cast that thing for free if you have big nasty spells in your graveyard casting those for free is a lot of value he does have to remain on the field and he's in boros colors so he's not going to be super easy to protect but he does have five toughness which is good um turn five you know he's subject to being disrupted but there's a ton of value here if you can like this is a build around for sure but if you can build around it, he has a lot of power. So that's the end of the spoilers for today. If you subscribe, I will be putting out more videos as we get more spoilers for this set. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up for me. It's free. It supports the channel, and I appreciate all the support. Till next time, have a great day.